everyone and welcome to the webinar titled Fit of Data in Scientific Inquiry. Uh, the aim of the webinar is to stimulate an active discussion about the importance of data fit from methodological point of view when undertaking any scientific projects that are based on empirical research. I hope my talk will inspire you not only to build a sound body of knowledge that develops theory and serves society based on credible and trustworthy methodology, but also withdraw your scholarly attention to responsible research in business management global network, as well as the United Nations Global Compact principles for responsible management education, as well as other various scientific communities and stakeholders that promote responsible research and education in social science. Let me start with asking a question. What is theory? Generally speaking, we could say that theory is a rational type of abstract thinking about a specific phenomenon. Or to be more specific, we could say that theory is a well-confirmed type of explanation of the world we live in that is made in way which is consistent with the scientific method, where the scientific method is simply an empirical way of acquiring knowledge about a specific phenomenon. Hence, we could say that a scientific method is nothing, nothing else than methodology in a scientific inquiry. Based on such an understanding of what theory is, we could say that when theorizing, we, as scholars, follow scientific thinking that is aimed at understanding the abstract structure of theories and the relationship between theories and evidence. The goal of such knowledge is not only to better understand the examined phenomenon that we are interested in, but also to predict, produce, or control future events that are inherent in that phenomenon. I think at this stage, it's important to emphasize that scientific thinking is an integral part of a paradigm that, for example, in Kuhn's view, reflects the development of theory as well as method of collecting and analyzing data to understand that theory that we are investigating, which collectively comprise traditions of scientific research in a particular scientific field. So, based on that, we could say that the art of theorizing is about the following, the following. A, developing credible explanations about examined phenomenon, and at the same time, B, ensuring that such explanations are context sensitive due to, for example, the diverse national context in which the examined phenomenon is embedded in and follow rigorous scientific method, which in the context of responsible research allows for replication. To shed the light on the scientific, on the significance of the relationship between methodological fit in scientific research, I think it's vital to understand the relationship between paradigm and methodology for theory building. And you could ask yourself a question, why? This is because methodology plays an integral part in linking the paradigm with the examined world and establishes standards 
for producing justifiable scientific knowledge. And it is methodology that operationalizes a theory development process and by doing so forms an integral part of scientific inquiry. Kuhn defines paradigm as the entire constellation of beliefs, values, techniques shared by the members of a given community. As such, a paradigm provides a collective answers to what is regarded as good science and sets the rules of the game for scientific community. As conceptualized by various scholars and philosophers, a paradigm is embedded in three building blocks, ontology, epistemology, and methodology. Ontology is concerned with the nature of being and its social reality, and as such, it constitutes the researcher's understanding and the essence of social reality and any phenomenon that is part of it. Simply saying, ontology points out to what phenomenon is there to know. Epistemology emphasizes the theory of knowledge of social reality, how it can be assessed and communicated to others. So, epistemology basically says or gives us an understanding of what we know and how we know it. Ontology and epistemology have a direct effect on methodology, which represents an operational understanding of the approach that we scholars follow to produce knowledge, including any assumptions and norms about the most appropriate ways to assess or access the empirical phenomenon on the examination. Simply saying, methodology points out how can we find out about the examined phenomenon. As such, methodology plays a significant part in linking the paradigm and the empirical world upon which scholarly work is based within the empirical research. So, if paradigms represents a way of seeing and methodology acts as the bridge between the paradigm and the empirical world, therefore methodology is at the service, if you like, of ontology and epistemology. It is the starting point of the research design and method and steers the choice of data and analytical technique or techniques in theory development within scientific thinking. The research design establishes a research plan that aims to contribute to theory development by gathering and analyzing the required empirical data. It is here that we scholars asks, uh, ask questions like, which research question or questions can we use to find about a phenomenon? Which data can we use to find out about that phenomenon? And which exact technique or techniques can we use to find out about it? To access the empirical world. So guided by methodology, the choice of research method is linked to the complex and interdependent elements which are interwoven with ontological and epistemological approaches of a paradigm. Therefore, it is crucial to understand the link between paradigm and methodology or fit of data for the production of knowledge that is credible and relevant. Why? because such link not only influences theorizing, but also shapes the evolution of science. It's worth noting that if we scholars 
are concerned exclusively with clear description of the employed method and its obligation to fit data to technical aspects of the inquiry, we may lose complex context that deserve to be investigated. Therefore, it's important to understand how the fit of data is being used and linked to the research method, as the incorrect choice of method might lead to overlooking the phenomenon that we are interested in, and therefore contributing only incrementally to theory building. To understand the link between a paradigm and methodology is not only crucial, but also relevant for theorizing. Why? Because the lack of understanding may pose some challenges to theory development. For example, first, paradigmatic preferences may influence or favor methodological choices over others within, within which in turn can introduce certain biases stemming from the existence of generally accepted methodological practices for undertaking empirical research within a particular community. Second, the lack of paradigmatic diversification dis dis uh, dismisses the importance of a methodological discussion and consequently an understanding about what methodology is and what it does. Consequently, this may lead to a lack of methodological fit in terms of consistency of the scientific method and techniques used, as well as a lack of paradigmatic fit. Third, a field that lacks paradigmatic diversification might find itself with a standardized methodology, which can be seen as uncritical and naive with the lack of understanding of the field's complexities and reality. Fourth, the use of the same paradigm may contribute only to the incremental development of research while preventing the understanding of complex interaction of hierarchical level that exists within a particular phenomenon. And finally, Without paradigmatic diversification, methodological innovation and creativity may deteriorate, which will affect theory development in the future. To demonstrate the importance of the understanding of the link between paradigm and methodology, I would like to refer to the work of Edmondson and McManus from 2007 where the authors point out that a theory in management research falls along a continuum from mature to nascent. Mature theory presents well-developed constructs and models that have been studied over time with increasing precision by a variety of scholars resulting in the creation of cumulative knowledge gained in a particular field. Nascent theory, in contrast, proposes tentative answers to novel questions of how and why, often merely suggesting new connections amongst phenomena. It reflects early research efforts to investigate new phenomena or phenomena about which there is little prior theory or formal theorizing. Intermediate theory, or maturing theory if you like, position between mature and nascent reflects provisional explanations of a phenomenon and partially develop constructs and relationships in a relatively open-ended stage of development. Research in intermediate theory draws on prior work, often across diverse literature, to propose new constructs and relationships. It tends to leverage qualitative and quantitative data to advanced research, 
and help establish the validity of relatively novel constructs and relationships that are being developed. Mature theory produces precise quantitative research designs. Intermediate theory benefits from a mix of quantitative and qualitative data to accomplish its dual aims. Nascent theory involves exploring phenomenon through qualitative data. So looking at this particular figure, we can see that Edmondson and McManus in 2007 put together research approaches, qualitative versus quantitative, with the stages of theory development. By doing so, the authors point out to uh, an area that they call the mean tendency in the choice of data in empirical research, presented as an oval to suggest potential leeway in research designs. To Edmondson and McManus, methodological fit simply reflects how the state of current theory shapes other elements of empirical research.